Good evening, Bahamas. Coming up tonight on our news. A break in at the John Kinney Museum leaves organizers to pick up the pieces. That story straight ahead. DNA leader Randall McCartney is hitting out at the government over the recently tabled Freedom of Information Bill. We've got the details straight ahead. The opposition leader hints at her next steps. Why the Fox Hill MP says history could be a lesson for the free national movement. Welcome to our news and thanks for joining us. I'm Christina McNeil. Topping news tonight, a major blow for the cultural community just one week before the Boxing Day Junkanoo Parade after thieves broke into the Junkanoo Museum and Resource Center stealing electronics, Junkanoo supplies and portions of irreplaceable costumes. Our Jasmine Brown spoke with president of the Junkanoo Corporation of New Providence and filed this report. Ferguson says the robbery took place late Wednesday night or early Thursday morning after the thieves broke in by removing this piece of wood, unscrewing this bolt, then reaching in to unlock the door. Ferguson explained that he knew something was wrong the minute he arrived to open the museum early Thursday morning. He says he saw an exterior gate kicked in, but it was when he got inside that he realized there was a break in. We recognize first uh, that all of the uh, uh, feathers were all over the floor. And so that meant that either, we, we thought a cat got into the building and couldn't get out. Mm -hmm. uh, and so w then we looked up and we realized that the, the uh, big screen uh, that shows all of the John Canoe tapes, that that TV had been removed uh, from the wall. And then we realized that we had a burglary. In addition to that 50 inch television being taken, Ferguson says nearly all of the museum's glue guns, pasting brushes, staple guns and glue sticks were also stolen. Items he says are used in the museum's kids craft center. But according to the JCNP chief, that wasn't the heartbreaking part as feathers were ripped from some of the largest displays in the museum. And this costume has been ripped from the top. So over here, this was a big ball with, I would say, with at least 50 pheasants and white feathers on top. And this costume was donated to us uh, years ago by uh, um, Reverend Cooper. Um, uh, he rushed in this costume. And, um, and you can see this is a whole hat, a mohawk look hat. All of the feathers have been ripped off. Ferguson estimates that the damage to that costume is around $1,500. The JCNP chairman says it is unfortunate that we've come to this place in our society where criminals have no limits. And it's a sad day, eh? but uh, we want to just tell people to please let's enjoy the season. Uh, it's the season of the birth of Christ. And then we culminate our season in the birth of Christ with a great John Canoe festival. And we want people to just let it be that. You know, and not let it be about crime and murder and, and, and the things that mirror the life that the Lord has given us. And so we ask everybody to please uh, just, just let's live the, lead, the, the reason for the season. Now all activities at the museum were canceled today and Ferguson says based on what they've seen so far, it's going to cost upwards of $5,000 to get the place up and running again. He says they plan on reopening Saturday morning to accommodate cruise ship passengers who were slated to visit the museum. Reporting for our news, I'm Jasmine Brown. Thanks, Jasmine. Well, Democratic National Alliance leader Branville McCartney is taking the government to task for the amount of time it's taken to table the Freedom of Information Bill. Acknowledging the bill is long overdue, McCartney wondered how useful it will be in uncovering things that were done this term. Dana Smith reports. The government tabled the long-awaited Freedom of Information Bill in the House of Assembly this week, but McCartney, who's been one among many calling for the bill to finally be pushed through, said the government must take the Bahamian people for fools. Questioning the government's commitment to transparency and accountability, McCartney pointed to the timing of the tabling, noting there's only months left in this Christie administration's term in office ahead of the 2017 general election. We have a very short period of time before the next election. This, this is just another political ploy on behalf of the PLP to say, look, well, at least we've done it. No man, if Bahamian people can't, they got to be able to see through that. If they can't see through that, talk, eat your lunch. 
Explaining the amount of time it took for the bill to finally be tabled, Education, Science and Technology Minister Jerome Fitzgerald said the FOI legislation was inherited from the previous administration, but it was rushed and woefully short of international best practices. As a result, this administration appointed a committee to work on revising and amending the bill. That original act was passed in 2012 by the Ingram administration, but was never enacted. McCartney said as it relates to timelines, it seems the PLP is doing the same thing. I said this before, I said they will table this a few months before the election. And, you know, I, again, the PLP must take the behavior of people for fools, man. This is the same thing the, P, the FNM did, you know. Because they tabled it, but you're not going to be able to use any of those provisions um, while they are in office. Suggesting this administration isn't as transparent as it could be, McCartney pointed to the Bahamar sale, the details of which have been sealed by the Supreme Court. This is the same, this is the same PLP government that sealed the deal, you know, in Bahama. <laughs> so you expect them to table any type of Freedom of, Freedom of Information Act before then? Reporting for Our News, I'm Dana Smith. Thanks, Dana. A little later, we'll tell you how activists plan to hit the ground running now that the FOIA has been tabled. In other news, Leader of the Opposition Loretta Butler-Turner is promising that her remaining Senate appointments will be shocking. And there will be maybe some shock, some awe, some surprises, but you will know that that will be a direct reflection of the people that make up this country. And that is a process of inclusion. It's going to be different. You're going to have reaction. You might even have rejection. But every Bahamian must know that at somewhere in governance, whether in um, the House of Assembly or in the upper chamber of the Senate, that they will be reflected in that makeup. On Monday, Butler Turner revealed that she was appointing DNA leader Branville McCartney as the leader of opposition business in the Senate. And while many have called on the seven MPs to disclose their end game, Butler Turner says revealing the game plan this early would not be a wise move. The reality is this. One week out, you've already seen change. One day after I was sworn in as the leader of the opposition, you already saw a movement. Why should I reveal to you my end game all in one day so that all of my detractors can try to take it on or either destroy it before it gets off the ground? She added that while she has been in the forefront in recent days, it takes a collective effort to rid the country of the Progressive Liberal Party. We have a team. It is a team of people. It is not a one woman, one man dictatorship. So the game plan, while I must admit, has the foundation, it still has to be filled out. And that takes collaboration. Well, as upheaval within the free national movement continues and the party continues to face consistent criticism from the public, Elizabeth candidate Dr. Dwayne Sands is making it clear who he supports. Georgie O'Bain reports. Former Free National Movement Senator Dr. Dwayne Sands says we are now entering a different era in politics in the Bahamas. According to Sands, the political landscape will continue to change over the next few months, but he knows who he will be supporting. On the same night that leader of the opposition Loretta Butler Turner had her candidate ratification for I Long Island rescinded by FNM party it. leader Dr. Hubert Minnis, her former leadership running mate took the stage, leaving many to question the role he would play in the future of the party. Sands confirmed his his allegiance lies with the leader of the party. You could have said that last month, you could have said it the month before, you could have said it for the last four and a half years. Again, I think it's very important not to confuse uh, the vying for office in a party. But if you cannot support the leader of the party and you are part of the party, then you have the right to leave. When I can no longer support Dr. Minnis, I will leave.
Sands refused to comment on Butler Turner's nomination being rescinded, but he said as long as they remain f &Ms, he will show his respect. Sands added that he would not accept a nomination for Senate if offered one by Butler Turner. They, they remain f and &Ms. And so whether after election they're no longer members of parliament, that's a different discussion. Right now, they remain f and &Ms. And I would hate to prejudice the process that's been started within the party. So, no comment. Sands commented that while the focus appears to be on him, he wants all Bahamians to remain focused on the goal of ridding the government of the PLP. It's not difficult at all. You know, I think people get confused. Uh, you know, in convention, we had no party officers. Everybody's entitled to buy for party officers. After convention, we came together as a party, one leader. So it's not difficult at all. Now, uh, I'm sure the microscope is on Dr. Sands, but the microscope ought to be on the PLB. Reporting for our news, I'm Georgie Obain. Still to come on our news, the Fox Hill MP weighs in on the battle for leadership before the next general election. What you need to know now that the Freedom of Information Act has been tabled in the House of Assembly and how turning offices orange is making a difference. That's coming up when our news returns.